this is my wood stove that I've had for close to 40 years now and it's been uh, really pretty good. Uh, the only problem I've had in the past has been that the air intake was kind of a uh, sloppy way of controlling. Uh, <clears throat> strictly mechanical. This thing would screw in and out covering up a hole in the side of the door to allow the amount of air that you wanted in. The problem was you have it open to get the fire started and then once it got gone then you'd have to go close it down a little bit and you'd have to constantly keep screwing this thing back and forth back and forth to get the right amount of air. So I tried to find something online some sort of a controller that somebody used to uh, control the air and I didn't have much luck so Necessity uh, is the mother of invention, so I decided to come up with something, and here's what it is. Uh, essentially, it's a two-part system. This covers the hole that I uh, originally had in the door for doing the air. And the way this thing operates, it looks kind of like a Rube Goldberg, but it's actually been quite reliable. I've had it in for a couple years now, and I haven't had any problems with it at all. Uh, right now, the stove has the air uh, open all the way, and you can see the hole over here where the air goes in, and that usually allows plenty of air uh, to go in and keep the fire going. Uh, it's kind of a crude uh, device that I made, but it's effective. Uh, this here just holds the, um, the damper, which will open and close, you see that later. Uh, this here is essentially just a bearing for, it's a bit screw that I drilled a hole through the center of, and it holds this long threaded rod, which will rotate. Uh, this is a motor, hobby motor. Uh, it's a one RPM motor, and there's a gear mechanism I brought, which even makes it down, it's four to one, so it makes it turn even slower. This here is a heat shield I had for the motor. Uh, it doesn't really get that hot right here, so it was kind of unnecessary, but I figured I'd uh, put it in anyway. So now the thing has just triggered from the controller that I'll show later. And what it's doing is slowly closing the air inlet. And I have a four RPM motor. I could put that in. It would make it go a little faster, but what's a big rush? And so it stops there. It leaves just a little gap to keep the fire going somewhat, but it will still slow down the fire enough that it will eventually open back up again. <clears throat> so the rest of it is, I have two limit switches here. One controls when the, when the uh, uh, thing spins all the way around and closes. Then that opens and stops the motor, and vice versa for the other end when it opens all the way. Uh, <clears throat> and like I said, it's very, very simple setup. I have some screws in here which actually trigger the switches, and they, I can move them around as uh, needed to uh, make the settings. <clears throat> yeah, this is a rubber band. It's kind of a uh, last minute thing. I just needed a little bit more pressure on the gears. As it is, this thing will open and close. If I want to do it manually, I just pull it out like this, and then I can turn the gear and open and close it manually if uh, I need to. All right, so what controls this whole thing? Let's go over here. <clears throat> and there's a the controller. Uh, I bought this off the uh, main guts of it. Or this little temperature controller. I got it from Amazon. It was pretty cheap, like 20 some bucks. And the way I have it now is I set it, my set temperature is 350. And I have a plus or minus 10 degrees setting on it. So at 360, it gets up to 360, it will uh, close. And then when it drops down to 340, then it will open back up again. And uh, the only other thing I put inside this box 
uh, is just a relay. Uh, and all the wiring comes in from those limit switches and also from a thermocouple which is mounted on the chimney. Uh, <clears throat> this is a 12 volt power source which controls the relay. That's all that's for. And I have an on and off switch. Essentially this just takes power off the motor in case I want to do it manually. <clears throat> so once it drops down to 340, then the thing will open again. So we'll see that as soon as it gets down to 340. All right, so we're almost at 340 and it'll start opening up again. I think I got one degree of hysteresis, so it'll go 339. And there it goes. <clears throat> so, just like when it closed, now it's the motor has got the reverse direction applied to it, and the thing is opening up. And once it hits the limit switch, then it will stop. <sighs> Slow it goes. And that's pretty much it. And it works fine. Get a little bit of overshoot, a little undershoot, no big deal. <clears throat>